Hello YouTube. Um, this is a video where I'm going to tell you my top 15 favorite albums of all time. The reason I'm making this video is because this is information that everybody needs to know. As is every top 15 favorite list of anything. Or top, you know, 10, top 5, whatever. Because in reality it doesn't freaking matter. But you know what? I decided to make one because... I enjoy making videos. Um, I'm going to preface this with a top or a five runners up. These low ones are really kind of here and there and barely top favorite albums. And as the list will progress on, it'll get more and more solidified. So just so you know, starts out a little intangible. So of the five runners up, um, First of them is Keen, Hopes and Fears. Um, this was an album that I listened to around the time I started to get into music and get into piano and stuff like that. Um, very piano based um, alternative rock music. Um, actually, the piano, there is, in this album, there is no bassist, it's just piano drums singing. It was really kind of an interesting album for me to listen to at the time because it kind of helped to shape and solidify the way I played piano at the time. Um, so it was just more of an influential album for me. It's not really one I listen to anymore, but it was kind of a like a milestone in, um, in my music. Um, next up on the runners up is Torches by Foster the People. This is, um, to me, a fun indie pop, indie tronica album. Uh, there's, personally, I find the songs to be a lot of fun. Um, people might just enjoy the singles and that's it, but I actually really like a lot of the deep cuts on this album. Um, songs like Waste, Waste is great, um, Call It What You Want. There's a lot of really interesting uh, instrumentation and um, just compositions on here. And personally, I'm a fan of Mark Foster's vocal delivery. So personally, it's it's a favorite of mine. It's a lot of fun. And it kind of highlights a point in time that was more or less enjoyable to me. So it's just kind of that, you know, fun memories, fun album kind of, you know, feel. Um, next on the list, Nick Drake, Five Lees Left. You might be thinking, well, how could this be in your runners up? Why isn't it in your top 15? But... It's whatever. It's not an album I listen to a lot, but there's a lot of great composition on this album. Great guitar work. Um, fun kind of alternate tunings going on. Um, and Nick Drake is just a great, great um, singer, was a great singer-songwriter. Um, I highly recommend if you haven't heard of him, check out his albums. Uh, Five Leaves Left might be the best entry-level Nick Drake album. Um, a lot of great songs on there. Uh, if you like Van Morrison, this is right up your alley. Uh, next, Fleet Fox's Helplessness Blues. Another album where you're probably like, whoa, how is this not in your top 15? Um, this is just barely missed, actually. It's an album I have a lot of respect for. Um, I love it a lot. But it just barely missed the cut. But, um, just by this much. is. It's really hard to figure out like where to place low top 15 albums and runners up. So this is kind of here and there. It depends on the songs, but as far as whole album goes, this one just barely missed it because there's a few songs that I didn't don't quite resonate with me. But if you like Mumford and Sons, um, Beach Boys, kind of uh, Simon and Garfunkel, this is a great indie album um check it out it's really good uh and then last on the runners up this is a tie between two national albums boxer and high violet um this was a really hard choice because they're both even albums in my mind um a lot of people will argue and say boxer is better which it could very well be and it probably is but personally i enjoy them both equally Boxer, really good. Um, Alt-rock, I don't even know. They weren't really post-punk revival yet. Um, they were more so that on High Violet, which I really liked. 
So it's kind of warring between the two albums as to which I like better, but they both have a lot of great songs. Um, great vocals from Matt Berninger, however you say his name. Um, I actually went to go see Nashville Live, and it was really fun. It was really cool. Um, they, they know how to rock their songs pretty good for being so mellow and understated. Um, so if you haven't checked out, checked out The National yet, I highly recommend them. Now, on to the top 15. Um, like I said, these lower ones, these lower five or so, really can be interchanged in a lot of different ways. Um, it's as the list gets up into like the top five where they start really becoming bullet point, bullet point. So, we have 15. LCD sound system, this is happening. Um, this is a the final album from LCD sound system. I think they had three altogether. Um, this is the one I listened to mainly. I knew, gosh, what was it? Um, the song from the previous album that's really popular, All Your Friends maybe, I think that's what it was. But this is the album that I know mainly and it's a dance punk album which is basically just dance music with a punk aesthetic and those two work well i mean dance and having that punk aesthetic just makes it a lot more visceral a lot more you know inviting to dance and it's a lot of fun it another genre this album slash band falls into is left field which is basically just music that surprises you in some way and for new timers to this kind of genre or band it's probably going to be a little jarring because it's not quite something you're used to but it's a lot of fun the more you listen to it so just go check out dance yourself clean the first song on this album um listen to that a couple times if it's not your cup of tea then it's not your cup of tea there it is 14 explosions in the sky the earth is not a cold dead place this and helplessness blues were kind of jumping back and forth um i wasn't quite sure which one to put in slash leave out but at the end of the day i've listened to this explosions album more than fleet foxes so it's just kind of the way it works out um this is the album that has Oh gosh, your your hand in mine. I think it's called. It's their most famous song. I think it was on a TV show, uh, Friday Night Lights. I think that's kind of what propelled them into fame, um, and kind of gave post rock a more mainstream name. Um, it's a really good album. It has five songs, I think, five or six, four or five. Um, typical post rock work. Um, you know, ten. 12 minute songs um it's a really good album uh i like it a lot it's very it's very entry level post rock um kind of in safe instrumentation um safe composition you know just guitars drums nothing crazy um people who enjoy just rock in general um you know mel the melodic rock will probably be able to get into this album fairly easily um it almost has, as far as sound goes, it leans more towards that emo, math rock sound rather than a visceral sound, as far as this album anyway. Um, there's kind of that Midwest rock emo splash on the melodies. So just so you know what you're getting into when you listen to this, it's not going to be super visceral, intense. It's going to be uh, emotional. And it succeeds very well at doing that. So I suggest, um, if you haven't checked out anything post-rock yet, uh, this album is a great introduction. Number 13, Daft Punk, Random Access Memories. Um, it was so hard to choose between this and Discovery. Uh, I only chose this one because the songs are more consistent, I think, I enjoy. Um, just barely, just barely. Uh, discovery missed by like one percent um random access memories an album that came out two years ago now i think and it is a great statement on music in general um it was recorded analog for the most part i think and 
it it's about music kind of coming back to its roots um which is what i'm all for uh, a lot of great dance songs on here um just daft punk being great uh, the closing track is awesome i just love a lot of songs on this thing and i highly recommend it's basic house music so daft punk random access memories check it out if you like that kind of dance disco house thing number 12 sufjan stevens illinois this is also another track uh, album that was kind of jumping off and on the runners up so um I, but I decided to put it on the list here because i've listened to it a lot i love it a lot i like a lot of the tracks and I think it's just a very unique, original, and engaging work of music. <coughs> um, for those of you who don't know who Sufjan Stevens is, he is a singer-songwriter, um, indie guy, indie folk singer-songwriter dude who injects um, his Christian lifestyle into his music in... A very tasteful way and he still maintains a very uh, widespread acclaim and love from all kinds of people so it just goes to show that you can put yourself into your music and not ham fist it which is a really good thing um, uh, I can relate to his music a lot it's really good uh, Illinois a lot of great tracks this thing is like an hour long an hour ten minutes something like that there's like, what, 20-something tracks on here? There's there's one track that's just like people clapping from the end of a previous song. And that's all it is. It's like, what, 10 seconds or something? And it's a really quirky, interesting album with a lot of unique, diverse, orchestral singer-songwriter stuff. It's crazy. Um... This is the album that has Chicago on it, which a lot of people have probably heard before. Um, if not, I, if you haven't checked out any Sufjan Stevens, this is probably the album to start with. Um, check out uh, Decatur's great. Chicago is great. Um, the first song on this album is great. Uh, the track names are really weird on this thing. Um, Sears Tower is awesome. And uh, Predatory Wasp of the Palisades is maybe my favorite. Uh, that's a great song. That's probably a good entry-level song for people who haven't heard Sufjan yet. Um, if not, also check out Seven Swans. That's a great simple folk um, singer-songwriter type deal there with a lot of banjo. He's a huge banjo player. Um, so yeah, that's number 12. Number 11, Loveless by My Bloody Valentine. Um, this is a shoegaze album, the shoegaze album. Um, this is kind of the album that pioneered shoegazing into the 90s, 2000s, whatever. Um, if you don't know what shoegaze is, it's basically the best way I can describe shoegaze in relation to this album is guitars fed through dozens of pedals and effects. Um, to the point where it basically looks like the music looks like the way this album cover looks like it's all fuzzy you can't quite make out melodies it's the same with the vocals too it some people might be annoyed by it because it's like i can't hear what's going on everything is buried in this like wall of fuzz but at the same time repeated listens make this thing more and more enjoyable because you can start to pick out the melodies and different things that you didn't notice before. It's like a really great movie that you don't quite understand the first time, but you know there was something there. You watch it over and over and you kind of get more out of it. That's kind of the way I feel with this album. And a lot of great songs. Um, just has that 90s feel to it uh, with the rock melodies. Just a lot of fun. I really like it. It's calming. For some people, it's the kind of album you'd probably want to get high and listen to. And I can understand that. Number 10, The Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. There was a point um, 
maybe three years ago, two or three years ago, where I decided, you know what, I'm going to marathon all of the Beatles music. I went from, what is it, Please Please Me, all the way to uh, Let It Be. I just took all their LPs and plowed through them straight ahead. It took me like a month or two, just because I had to kind of put aside time to, and like, if I was going to listen to music, it had to be the Beatles, because I wanted to progress through this thing. So, I'd, like, go on Facebook, and I'd post um, my f my thoughts on each album after I listened to it, and my favorite song from that album, and in a way, it kind of opened me up to deep cuts of the, that the Beatles did that are amazing. There's a lot of amazing Beatles songs that people aren't aware of. Everyone knows Yesterday. Everyone knows Help. Everyone knows Eleanor Rigby. Everyone knows Hey Jude. blah de blah de blah The big hits. Everyone knows those. And they're great songs. They're fantastic songs. But there are so many deep cuts that people aren't aware of. Um, and Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band is a great example of this. There's songs on here. When I'm 64. Um... That one, I'm going to put up the title like right in front of my face, the one I'm talking about. I don't remember what it is right now. She's leaving, I think. She's leaving home. Whatever this says. I found so many great Beatles tracks while doing this. And in turn, it made me discover my favorite Beatles song of all time, which is on this album, A Day in the Life. This is a song that I could do an entire video about, analytically. Um, for its time, this is a masterpiece of a track. It was, it pioneered some innovation that hadn't really been seen in mainstream music before. Um, the crescendos, just look up this song on Wikipedia, listen to this song, look it up on Wikipedia, read into what it's about and the details behind what happens. It's amazing. It's an amazing song. Not only is it just catchy, good to listen to, a quality song, but the creativity behind it is incredible. Like, for instance, the last chord of, of the whole song is this. And it's like several pianos playing that chord all at the same time, as loud as they can. And as the chord phase out, they turn the recording up. So it just sounds like the chord lasts for literally a minute straight, as it's just like, and it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. It was creative, it, it was, um, so I'd, highly recommend checking out Sgt. Pepper's in full if you haven't. Um, it kind of pioneered pop music in general. Um, a lot of the mainstay staples. Um, if not pop, then just creativity and diversity in pop. Um, huge album. Check it out. Number nine. Slint Spiderland. This is the album that sort of set post-rock in motion um, and post-hardcore too. Uh, not that it invented it, it didn't pioneer it, but it was a milestone and a big one. Um, I think six tracks on this thing and it's kind of an abrasive listen your first time. You start it up and you're thinking, oh, the production sounds kind of cheap. I'm not really digging the vocals all that much. It's like, what's the big deal? And I kept listening, and I got to a track called Don Amon, a man, something like that. And it's this half-spoken word, half-singing, like, post-rock song about this guy with social anxiety. And the music is visceral. It mimics, mirrors this guy's narration perfectly and it's it's an incredible song um and then that goes right into washer which is straight up post-rock and great post-rock at that very twangy 
um, guitars uh, with a great, just great timber on them. And I think that Washer is, Washer alone is a huge pioneer for post-rock. Not the whole album in general, just the main riff uh, theme of Washer. It's really great. Uh, Good Morning Captain, devastating song. Um, this album, it might be hard to get into for some people, but it laid groundwork for the future for not only post-hardcore, but post-rock and math-rock. Um, American football probably have a lot to thank uh, Slint for. So, I'd check it out if I were you. Um, if it doesn't quite hit you right, just try, try a few different tracks. Um, if not, then oh well. Next. Scott Walker, Scott 3. Scott Walker, a very interesting artist. Um, he started his career with this Baroque pop, traditional pop, art pop, experimental music thing. Um, just imagine Frank Sinatra um, mixed with Radiohead in the 60s. He made some very interesting music and he is currently making even more interesting music um teaming up with metal bands his own personal music is so avant-garde and experimental now that it's just like funny to some points but i personally am very keen and partial to his 60s stuff uh scott four was a pretty decent album but scott three for me is almost a comfort thing because I love traditional pop. I love Frank Sinatra, all that kind of stuff. Louis Armstrong, great things. Uh, swing music, you know, it's it's not bad. And this kind of music takes me back to a certain time that I am very partial to and that I love a lot. Um, you know, the era of Hitchcock movies, all that kind of thing. And listening to Scott 3 takes me back there, but also it stands on its own musically. It's very creative. It's very experimental. Listening to the first track of Scott 3, um, It's Raining Today, I think it's called. The opening strings sound like a song off of Kid Radiohead's Kid A. Um, very dissonant strings and then tr you know that baroque pop instrumentation comes in and then you know Scott's croon you know it's raining today and it's this weird mixture and it's very hypnotic and you're thinking okay I want to listen to this thing more and pretty much every song on this thing is great for me I can listen to this album front to back easy um, it just goes in one ear, resonates in my head, goes out the other ear, and it's just beautiful. So if you enjoy Frank Sinatra, that kind of stuff, I'd recommend checking out Scott Walker, particularly this album. Um, his other stuff, not quite bad. I went, I don't know. So if you like, you know, traditional pop, broke pop, that kind of stuff, I'd recommend Scott Walker, um, probably Scott 3. I'd say this is probably the easiest to do. Just because his other stuff, I'd say, isn't quite as good. Um, Scott 3 is probably one of his best. Um, and my personal favorite. Uh, number 7, I think. Um, the Strokes, Is This It? Um, this is bare bones, garage rock, indie rock. Um, just straight uh, treble guitar um, not really visceral a little lo-fi at least with the vocals um, coupled with Julian's really gruff singing make this kind of a hard-hitting type of sound um, but at the same time it's not real bassy it's really interesting um, is This It uh, was their first album, The Strokes' first album. And a lot of people, you know, they'll do the Is This It versus Room on Fire thing. And personally, I just like more songs off of Is This It. That's the way it works. Um, Room on Fire sounds like 
kind of a maturity, kind of a different approach to the same thing from Is This It, but I just like more tracks from the first album, so it's on the list. Um, extremely catchy. So catchy. Some of the catchiest songs I've ever heard in my life. Not even kidding. Um, everything's great. The opening track... Um, uh, uh, afraid uh, Hard to Explain's good um, There's another song I'll put it up here um, Hard to Explain and then this song um, My two favorites I think Someday is great uh, Just a lot of really good songs on here um, Drenched in like New York overtones um, If you like garage rock If you like indie rock Just rock in general Give this a listen, see what you think. It could it could be a new thing for you. Um, if you have already heard it, great. Isn't it good? Number six, Arcade Fire, The Suburbs. Arcade Fire was a huge band for me in the 2010s. Um, I've done a review of Reflector, their latest album that came out a couple years ago. And in that video, I talk kind of in detail about why they're an important band for me. But the suburbs came out around a time when I just started my job, and it was very, in, you know, very impressionable, very influential time for me. And the suburbs was just the album I needed. Um, really, really great indie rock, alt rock, um, kind of art rock sometimes, I guess. Um, just really great. The Arcade Fire have a very unique sound. Um, I recommend checking them out. This or Funeral is probably the best entry level record for them. Um, if you put on The Suburbs and just listen to the opening track, The Suburbs, and you're not interested, it's probably not the band for you. You might think, oh, it's hipster garbage. It's not really because they've sort of broken into the mainstream not that any of that matters. It's the quality of the music. Um, I like to enjoy music regardless of what cult of people follow that music. Because at the end of the day, why should people keep you back from enjoying something you like? So yeah, um, I highly recommend Arcade Fires the Suburbs if you haven't listened to it. Um, really great um, concept album too. Uh, you listen to it and you feel like, you know, you definitely feel something special about it. Um, not a whole lot more I can say that I haven't already said in my review of Reflector. So if you want more on the suburbs, go check that out. Number five. Godspeed you, Black Emperor. Lift your skinny fists like antennas to heaven. This is the best post-rock album I have ever heard in my life. I, I don't know. You can argue with me if you want, but that's just personal opinion. Um, this thing, like I talked about, um, Explosions in the Sky. If you haven't listened to Post Rock, give Explosions a try. Um, this, however, much more experimental, um, much more creative, uh, much more daring. This is extremely visceral cinematic, dynamic, beautiful, heart-wrenching post-rock rock music. Um, it's more or less, it seems to be a very apocalyptic album. Um, it, it starts with a very um, uplifting, incredible intro, uh, diverts into Amazing Grace, and then ends on... It's really hard to pinpoint the sound of this album. Uh, it's The moods are very intense. Um, it, really interesting ending to the first track. It has this like automated message from an Arco AMPM Mini Mart with like cars driving by. And then it like progresses into like sounds of like radio calls from war and like really desolate deep piano and it just it's like that combination of things just makes you think like something has been destroyed 
Like, it, the album doesn't really overtly say anything. I mean, the song titles kind of have hints, but even just the music is very much leaning towards destruction. And in a lot of ways, the album is like a movie in where you, you're you going through and you're just seeing all these different things happening. Um, it's an hour and a half long, but I highly recommend if this kind of thing sounds interesting to you, check it out because it's one of the most dynamic music experiences I've ever had. And I still listen to it a lot. Um, very awesome. Number four, Pinkerton by Weezer. Um, between Pinkerton and Blue Album, I had to go with Pinkerton. Um, I think it's their masterpiece. Uh, awesome, visceral power pop. This is one of their hardest albums. Um, everyone knows Weezer by Pork and Beans, Buddy Holly, Beverly Hills, uh, blah, blah blah whatever else. Um, Say It Ain't So, My Name Is Jonas. A lot of songs from their first album, uh, which is a good thing. Um, but there's a lot of songs on Pinkerton that people don't know aside from like El Scorcho. And that's really sad to me because Pinkerton, for the mainstream audience, Pinkerton isn't a huge, a huge thing. And I want to change that. I want people to listen to Pinkerton. Um... It's a great album on a personal level for Rivers. Um, he wrote this during a point, I think he was at Harvard, and he wrote it while he was at Harvard. Very interesting thing about this. It was originally going to be a science fiction space opera, and that kind of fell through, and all the song, some of the songs got recycled onto Pinkerton. But you can still hear through like a collection of demos and whatnot, um, a rough cut of that space opera. And it's really cool. I really like it a lot. Um, but Pinkerton is kind of what survived from that, and it's amazing. I, you know, it's top four, or uh, number four. Um, it's a, an album about uh, disillusionment um, with rock and roll lifestyle. Uh, and the thing I love about it is how the lyrics cover kind of dark material, um, sex, fame, a lot of deep things, but it's not a saddening album. Um, the emo label has kind of been stuck onto Weezer before, and I can understand why. But the thing with emo is, it's typically um, a very pensive genre. It's a genre that makes you reflect and kind of puts your mood into that box um, that that band is in. And Weezer doesn't quite do that. Weezer makes you sympathize and relate to these things, but the power pop instrumentation and just the fun delivery of these lyrics kind of, it's almost like a celebration of the way things are. Um, as a male who has lived through his late teens, early 20s, this album just resonates with me. Not even on like an emotional level, but just like how we live in this culture. Um, songs like El Scorcho, A Great Good Life, Awesome, Why Bother, No One Else. They're just all excellent, excellent songs. And it's the kind of thing that I can listen to in my car, bob my head along to, and just feel like I'm experiencing something with this band because they've made something that just talks about life how it is. And I just think that's great. So if you haven't checked it out yet, Pinkerton by Weezer, their magnum opus in my opinion. Number three, we're getting to the nitty gritty. In the Airplane Over the Sea, Neutral Milk Hotel. I have actually covered this entire album on piano and guitar. Um, I'll put a link somewhere, description, annotation. Um, I covered the entire album just as like a musical project. Um, 
this is an incredible album. Never before have I listened to an album where I felt like I was partaking in an experience on this level. I mean, you know, these last two albums in this top five are like that, very much so. But this is just something where it's like, there's so much here that's intangible and I can't put my finger on it. Like with these last two, I can very deeply explain why I feel like I'm partaking in an experience, you know, apocalyptic stuff, um, teenage life, whatever, culture. And the thing with this one, it's not even something I can really relate to. The lyrics are crazy. Um, Anne Frank is a huge theme of, of, of the music. Like, how can I relate to this? Um, but it's this weird musical anomaly that I'm just able to pick at and pick at and pick at and always take some new feeling from it. Um, so in the airplane over the sea, uh, folk, psych folk, um, indie folk, noise, um, lo-fi music, uh, I have never, I had never heard anything like this until like seven eight months ago and then i checked out the album uh it's kind of an album cover and band title i had seen floating around here and there but i didn't quite know what the genre was and then i found out it's indie folk lo-fi and i'm like i'm gonna try that out and i listened to it and i was just instantly in love is just like wow this is great um the compositions really really simple but there are few people and bands who can take simple chords and construct a melody to go over co these chords that just hit in a certain way and you think like wow this is good it's a really hard thing to put my finger on but like songs like songs like in the airplane over the sea um, really resonate with me like that where the melody is just so good um, so if you haven't checked this album out give it a try um, it might be too weird for you the lyrics might be crazy but if you're interested in it keep plugging along and you'll warm up to it I promise and you'll not be sorry um, top three this is number three. Very certain about that. It's a huge album for me. I don't get tired of it. I listen to it over and over and over. And I can still just put it on at any point and enjoy it. It's really good. Number two. Radiohead in Rainbows. But there are these ways in the kid A or a computer or even the bands. Because I like In Rainbows more. Maybe. It's hard to decide because Kid A is incredible. OK Computer is incredible. The Benz is great. Hail to the Thief is great. What's Pablo, honey? No one knows. But when it comes down to my personal taste, In Rainbows is huge for me. Um... Probably their most accessible album, in my opinion. Next to maybe OK Computer or, or The Benz, like their early stuff. Um, Kid A, Hail to the Thief, King of Limbs are kind of hard to get into, I think, for some people. But the thing about In Rainbows is, I don't know why, but the production, the lyrics, the instrumentation, everything about this album resonates with me it's this encapsulating hypnotic thing that i can't quite describe i mean when i put on songs like nude or my favorite radiohead song of all time reckoner i am like swept away to this different place and i know that's kid a for a lot of people and i can understand that it's the same with me but in rainbows just does something else and it's wonderful. It's great. 
and there's a second CD to In Rainbows. It's a lot of B-sides, and I love that just as much. Um, there's songs on there, Last Flowers, um, Go Slowly. Some of my favorite Radiohead songs are on In Rainbows. Um, it's an album that I think is kind of glossed over because it's not Kid A. It's not anything crazy or inventive. It's just experimental alt rock. It doesn't break the mold in a lot of ways, but uh, I I just love it. I love it so much. Um, it's my favorite Radiohead album. Deal with it. Finally, the f number one, my top favorite album of all time. Going to be a huge disappointment to you guys. Parachutes by Carl. <laughs> Why? Why is it this one? What? The band sucks. Have you heard from the Rihanna song? The Paradise is the... What? What is it? I can explain. When I started to learn to play piano in the early 2008... The early 2008. It was all because I had come across this video on YouTube... Um of this guy, Ryan Jones, Go Titans 999, I think, um, how to play Clocks by Coldplay on piano. And that's what I learned. Um, I learned that's the first thing I learned how to play on piano ever, uh, whatever that was, seven years ago. And that's kind of shaped who I have become as a musician. Um, I learned Clocks, um, he had a lot of other videos on his channel, uh, songs from Rush of Blood, songs from X and Y. Um, he kind of died out around the time Viva came out, which is when I discovered him. Um, and he kind of picked up a little bit later, and he's done videos off and on. But uh, he got married recently, as have I. And actually, my wife walked down the aisle to Yellow from Parachutes because that's my favorite song and I was like that's the one thing that I want in the wedding is I want you to walk down the aisle to yellow and she did and I bawled it's two in the freaking morning dude I need to finish this but the thing about Parachutes is it kind of came about in my life at a point where I needed a change um, I was listening to heavier music uh, more punk stuff and not that that stuff is bad, I, I am enjoy it fine now, but at the time I was thinking like, I'm very impressionable, part of my brain is developing, I need to kind of clean the slate a little bit, I want, I want something easier, I, I want to take a little bit of a different path, and Parachutes was kind of that path, um, soft rock, post Brit pop, easy going music, easy going rock. Um, it, you know, it's nothing visceral, nothing exciting in the least, but it's very calming to me. Um, it's like probably for some people, like they get take high, they get high just to mellow out. And that's what this album does to me. It mellows me out in a lot of ways. Um, I'll put on sparks and it just takes me to a place where it's like, mm, that's, that's fine. That's good. We live in a beautiful world. Don't Panic is great. Um, Spies is great. I love all the songs on the album. Um, Everything's Not Lost. It's just a really good album to me. Um, a lot of people might disagree, but it was a huge cornerstone at a very pivotal point in my life, and I owe it a lot. So, I still love Coldplay, even though I... Like I said, I think they've fallen off the bandwagon, fallen off the wagon a little bit. But I still have a very deep affection for the band, and I think that they can write great music, and I think they have. Um, so Parachutes holds a very special place in my heart, and that's why it's number one. So, thank you everyone for watching. Um, I don't know why you made it through so far, because this is a long video. But, um, yeah. Uh, I just felt like doing a top albums video just cuz 
because I like to talk about myself because I'm a narcissistic. So thank you for watching. Um, check it out. I'll put some links to my album reviews down below. Um, they're kind of old. And it was back in a point where I just gave everything like eights, seven and eights. But um, hopefully my discussions of the song still hold up. But uh, there's a new Radiohead album in the pipes uh, somewhere. They're recording it right now. Um, I really can't wait for that. It's going to have a lot of great songs on it, hopefully, um, that I've heard before. Uh, so I'll probably do a review of that if the, that comes out. And then Coldplay's next album is in the works, too. So I'll do a review of that. And I think that's all. Peace.